Do you have real friends who just like you for you and not because of who you are or what you do? Very, 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 very few. Welcome to the Father's Day. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Father's Day is on Patreon. So click the Patreon link in the uh, description to support our work. And thank you in advance for it. I absolutely appreciate it. I have an amazing guest today, Tito Jackson. He is a solo artist, rock and roll hall of famer, and an original member of the Jackson Five. Tito, thank you so much for taking time out to come on with us. I appreciate it. You're quite welcome, Jesse. You don't know this, but I lived in Gary, Indiana for a while. I went to Edison High School. And I remember when you guys used to be in con uh, those contests at different schools, and you used to rehearse in car garages and alleys, and we used to stand around and watch you. And that was before you guys was really known. And it's amazing what happened to you guys after a while. So congratulations, man. Thank you so much. You know, that was all worth the time and the effort. Did you ever imagine that the Jackson 5 would become the Jackson 5 in the way that it has? I had big dreams. I think everyone uh, in the group, all the brothers had big dreams. We always wanted to be like some of our idols, like the James Browns and the Jackie Wilsons and so on. But uh, those were just children dreams, you yeah. know? But to see it come to a reality, it hasn't been easy, but it's been fantastic. Of course. What was hard about it? When you said it hasn't been easy, what does that mean? Well, it requires a lot of dedication. That's one of the harder things. You you have to be willing to sacrifice a lot of things, you know, yeah. uh, like uh, what other people get to do. Do you miss out on your childhood? Because during those times, you know, that's a, like, fun childhood time. Not really. I don't think I missed anything because... I had so much fun doing it as a kid. Or I felt I was even getting more as a kid. <laughs> nice. You know, the other kids were playing Little League and, and Ryan playing hide and go seek. I was doing some real good stuff, playing in clubs and wedding, playing for weddings and all yeah. these other things. And then talent, winning talent shows, that's big stuff for a kid. Nice. I went to Edison High School at the time. Which high school did you guys go to? Uh, I left Gary before I got to high school age. My brother Jackie did go to Gary Roosevelt and my sister went to Gary Roosevelt. Nice. My high school just were in California. How do you see yourself now, today? How do you see Tito? When you see you, how do you see you? Well, I see someone that's done a lot. You know, when I was young, I didn't realize all the work and the hard effort that I was putting forth. But now I see all that and uh, I'm, I'm very appreciative that the, the Lord gave me the position and, and, and uh, to share the gift of love and music and all these things. And uh, I see myself as a, someone that made a difference, you know, uh, you know, I, uh, and I'm always trying to make a difference. Uh, it, uh, life is short, but it's long at the same time, you know, so we, it's not what you are, uh, 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 enjoy it here on this earth is what you accomplish and share with others. Uh, do you have perfect peace? Perfect peace is something that uh, uh, I think no one can claim that. Uh, uh, I have people that comes to my door and, and, and you know, they're, they're selling something or trying to get you to get involved in some type of program and, it winds up into a whole different conversation. <laughs> yeah. Are you, do you, are you a Christian? Yes, I am. And, and, and being a Christian means that you believe in God, right? Absolutely. And so as a believer or, or, or son of God, why do you believe that you cannot have perfect peace? Because uh, not today. Not, let me add <laughs> that. There's too much going on. And nothing's nothing is perfect but the Lord Himself. Uh, 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 it's uh, uh, perfect peace. I would have to hibernate and uh, and and pretty much, you know, just be about me. 
uh, uh, um, to have that quiet moment or peaceful times or whatever. But I, I think uh, with life comes the ups and downs and, and the, 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 the peaceful, peaceful times and, and times when it's not so peaceful. The world isn't peaceful, so it's hard to live in peace if you're living in an unpeaceful society. But I have noticed that as sons of God, you know, he said, as sons of God, we should be in the world but not of it. And when the world is going crazy because we are sons of God, we will have peace. We won't be a part of the craziness because we have overcome the fallen state. Do you believe that human beings are in a fallen state? My show is called The Fallen State. And what it means that when it's saying that people are in a fallen state and they need to overcome, do you believe human beings are in a fallen state? I don't, I don't know exactly how to answer that. Uh, I really don't because I'm not getting the full meaning of the phrase fallen state. You know how God said that we must be born again? Yes. And if uh, if it not been born again, it means that you've fallen away from God. So you're you're living in darkness and don't realize it. And it's that that we must overcome. Do you believe that's what, that could be? Yeah, I think uh, everyone deserves a chance, another chance to be born again, yeah. whatever. And with today's, when I look at the future generations and, and, and all the uh, the the the, the uh, uh, personality of the youth, youth, you know, it it makes you wonder, you know, when with all the new technology with your TikToks and your <laughs> Instagrams and some of the things that they show there, and when I see little babies twerking and all this other craziness, yeah. it's like it makes you wonder what, hey, what's going on? I I. I made music at the time when you were afraid to say damn on the record. Yeah, that's you right. Know, now they're talking about anything and everything and how they want. I noticed that you can't even have a conversation with millennials without curse words. Even at, when they're at church and I should ask them a question, you go to get some cursing even in their language and they don't realize it's like second language to them. They don't see anything wrong with it. Exactly, and that, <laughs> that's bothering. Yeah. You know, I lived, I grew up in Alabama, even though I lived in Gary for a minute, but I grew up down in Alabama. And I, I, I learned recently, or I was told that your mother's from Alabama, right? She grew up yeah. in Alabama? Yeah, Hertzboro. Yeah, I grew up right at Hertzboro. Uh, I live uh, about 30 minutes away from Hertzboro where we did our shopping there. I used to go yeah, there every Columbus, weekend. Right? So what? It's near Columbus, Georgia, I think. Absolutely. That's uh-huh. amazing. Have you ever gone down there and spent time down there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I've been there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you like it? My... Oh, yeah, it was different. It was cool, though. I liked it, man. My uh, grandpa, papa, we called him. You know, he, uh, he used to take us out and show us all the fields and all the land he owned. Yeah. As you could see and that whole thing. It was, it was nice. I remember, and the barbecue was fantastic. It was amazing. Well, tell your mama you talked to a Hurstboro boy today. I certainly <laughs> will. <laughs> Hometown. So what is one of the, you like, you guys are well known around the world, you are, and what is uh, one of the biggest misconception about you or uh, for being famous? How, what, what is one of the biggest mis- misconception about being famous? Wow, I'm trying to say misconception. Well, I I don't I don't know if this is a misconception or not, but uh, I feel that popularity and fame, celebrityism, and all these other things is what you make of it. A lot of people hear that that phrase and they think negative. Yeah. You know, uh, oh, you're you're single, or you're at, you oh, you're in show business. Wow, that's a tough, rough, bad business or whatever. It's what you make of it. You yeah. choose. You you once you get to a point where you're drawing attention, the direction you take is yours. I really feel that way because uh, 
when I was uh, in show business young and I've been in the business my entire life practically yeah. since I was a little kid. All the artists, you know, back in the day uh, from Shalice, Manhattans, Dale Eurifics, Etta James, uh, Jackie Wilson, you name them, they used to always tell us, you guys are great, but I just want to let you know, one thing you don't do, you don't stay away from to the drug thing. Yeah, they, that was constantly embedded into our brains when we were children. You know, all the artists used to tell us that, and they they used to always say that uh, 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 the drug, uh, uh, cocaine and stuff, is worse than having a, a partner. They'll take all your money, and that used to always scare <laughs> that scared me to death. <laughs> That's so, true, you know, you know but. Uh, you know, it's, it's what you make of it. Show business is what you make of it. You know, I'm in show business, but when I'm not on that stage or under a microphone or whatever, I'm just a normal guy, just like you and all your partners or whatever, you know? Yeah. I'm just living living through it, you know, just like everyone else, you know? I've and noticed that you seem more stable today. While growing up and being famous, were you... What kept you rooted? What kept you from going off the cliff? Well, like I said, we when we were young, we didn't really realize the impact that we had made oh. or were making at the time. We were just young men enjoying seeing the world. I mean, we would go to our little uh, private schools in California, and they, they'll be studying about some uh, history in England or whatever. And uh, we'll come back and they're learning about the queen and we'll show them pictures of us and the queen. <laughs> so it was it was uh, it was kind of cool. You know, they they learning about the, the parliament and Big Ben and all these things. And we're taking pictures and, you know, uh, sharing them with the classroom. So it was nice in that way. I got to see a lot of things when I was young that you normally wouldn't see if you wasn't yeah. traveling show business any regrets any regrets i don't know that's a hard that's a hard, you you can always think and say it could have or should have or would have which is words i don't like to use yeah so i'm very happy with the life that i've lived and uh, the, the uh pleasant life that's been set forth for me yeah so I have no regrets. I'm very thankful for what the Lord had put in front of me and allowed me to accomplish. So Amazing. I, 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 I have no regrets. I started an organization 30 years ago now called Bond, and it's a brotherhood organization of a new destiny. And we are rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man because uh -huh. I grew up with father and mother, grandfather and grandmother, and we were family-oriented, right? And uh -huh. and I noticed that as a result of having a family, you were able to deal with most things in life as a young person growing up and as an adult. Now the family has been destroyed, and so we were restoring it. And I wanted to know, who were you closest to your father? Because I know you had both parents in the home, but who were you closest to, your father or your mother? I was close to both of them. It depends on what I was seeking, whether it was I uh, was looking for some love because uh, of a, a situation with a girlfriend. I would talk to my mother because she would be more, a little more easy about it when my father would say, boy, let me tell you, <laughs> it, let her go. There's other ones. He would say, <laughs> <laughs> Pop, was, Pop was straight ahead. So I yep. would, like that. But I was, uh, if I was talking about uh, something athletical or fishing or whatever, of course, pop. So I was close with both my parents. And so what the situation was at the time. I totally agree with you about the advice because I remember growing up, men wouldn't put up with a lot of stuff that men put up with today, coming from women. They would tell uh -huh. you, you know what, let it go. Don't let a woman control you. Let it go. Yeah. They're more out, they're more fish in the sea. Yeah, girls like her come a dime a dozen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Pops used to say to me. That's right. And so young, and I love her. So. Right. Do you miss him? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. He was the man, the strength, you know, for uh, me 
uh, learning how to be a man. Yeah. Or, or my my master to portray or or, or look up to. Right on. When you, when you have father, you know you you're never too old to look up to him or ask for some advice because we remember they've lived longer than us. They've yeah. probably experienced a lot more than us. It's so important to really be close to your father uh, yes, while growing up. Yes, it is, especially for young men. Yeah. And young so, men. so I know that you have three sons. I think I read that, right? Three sons? Yes, I do. Do you have any girls or just boys? No, I have a little baby girl. But the boys yeah. came first? Boys came first. Real man made boys first. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, I have three sons. Uh, we call them the uh, three, three T, you know, and they got their little singing groups and all these things they do. And they're young men. They're responsible. And uh, I don't get the late night uh, police call. Or nice. It's, it's, it's the cool kids, you know. And so that is that because of the way that you raised them? I think it's a little bit with me and their mother. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that I stress to them is uh, respect others. Treat other people the way you like to be treated. Yes. You know? So so they, they, they understand that quite well. And, uh, and be giving, help people out, you know. So they, 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 they're pretty cool like that. Nice. Um, one one thing about one other thing about that, and then I want to ask you about the world today. When when you were growing up, and you would hear rumors in the media about you guys, and you know how people lie, and jealousy, and envy, and they would just say anything to the media. How did you handle that? All those things. Well, my father was always tell us to have thick, tough skin. Yeah. He, yeah, he used to tell us, they not hurting you. You doing it. Uh, they outside looking in, you know. So yes, you're inside. sir. Yeah. Don't, don't, let, don't let other people bother you or their words. That's their opinion. I ain't going to say what he re used to. No, well, well, what he used to say. <laughs> Some people are like, you know, a-holes. A Everybody got one opinion <laughs> about opinions. That's, That's right, man. That is so yeah. true. I remember growing up, too, my grandparents used to tell us, don't worry about words. What you worried about what someone cares? That should be the last thing you think about what someone say or think about you. And we had to, we didn't really, we were tougher then. I know the young people today are soft. They can't handle anything. They could hear things that someone said and just blow them out the water, whereas we were taught not to be that way growing up. That's right. Certain things you just didn't do as young men when we were growing up. Certain colors you didn't wear <laughs> when we were growing up. <laughs> you know, all these turco colors and all that. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and pink and all that kind of stuff. Turquoise colors. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. So, you know, it's a different world today. Uh, uh, they can call me old school or what have you, you know. Yeah. Whatever school it is, I like the school that I went to. Me too, man. I'm grateful. I am totally grateful. I, I wouldn't want to be a young man today. Yeah, that's right. It would be very difficult for me. But do you believe, as I do, that if young men and women had Fathers and mothers together who set that example as your parents did. Do you think, and my parents, do you think that things would be better today? If oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I, I think it's uh, very important that uh, young men who have children at a young age is so important for you to be there yeah. to guide your child, to show him how to be a a man or, or a person or a good person in the world, whether it's a, a, a little boy or a little girl you have, you know, that's so important. Uh, that's one of the things that when I was a young man, I had kids young, you know, and uh, that's one of the reasons why I didn't have a career when I was young. Because yeah. with the Jackson 5, which was uh, my main source of income, 
and and then getting uh, married young and having children young, I just didn't have the extra time to chase a solo career. Right. I knew it was important to be there for my boys. That's right. Absolutely, man. You, uh, I, um, I made a baby, unfortunately, out of wedlock when I was 18 as well, and I knew I needed to be there for him. And so mm-hmm. I, I, I went to Chicago from Alabama. I worked at Inland Steel for two weeks to make That's one. My father worked. Yeah, I know. I worked there for two weeks, man. I couldn't handle it. Until. I'd rather pick cotton than work at Inland Steel. But I worked. It's hot. So what? It's hot there, huh? Yeah, it's very hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And so I moved to L.A., and, and I was going to prepare a play for my son and his mother to come live with me. And his mother forced him, my, my, my girlfriend at the time, her mother forced her to get married because at that time it was an embarrassment to be married out of wedlock. I mean, to have babies out of wedlock. And so, but I went and got my son, but she had already got married. And because I just didn't want him to be without me, to be without a father. Right, right. So, so I tried to make those sacrifices for him. And that's yeah. what needs to start happening today. That's right. Uh, we need we need uh, you fathers to be there for your children. Yeah. Do all, do all you can do. I know life is very difficult and very hard at times. But think about it. Do you really need to buy that pack of cigarettes? That's right, do man. Really, you know, do you really need to go out to the club and spend maybe 20 or $30 tonight? You know? Put your prior one. Of, that's one. Of, put your priorities in line. Absolutely. Get them in uniform. You know. Yeah. That's how. And trust me, what you do today, you'll be rewarded for, or not rewarded for tomorrow. Absolutely. Oh, amazing. You invest, in, you, be, you invest in your child. Your child will love you until the day he or you die. Yeah. How do you see the, with this whole Black Lives Matter thing, Antifa, the uh, terrorist attack up on America, the, the race war uh, uh, between the blacks and the whites, and the mess that's going on? How do you see the world today? And what do you think the cause of all the stuff that's happening, the negative stuff that's happening? Well, we've been seeing this for a long time. I mean, we've been seeing this since we were children, you know, because... Uh, when we were the Jackson Five coming up, you know, they always gave us the BS rooms, you know, the ones in the back where the garbage man comes early in the morning and get the garbage. So you're hearing all the squeaking from the hydraulics from the truck and the cans slamming. And this is like six in the morning. Or, you know, they'll tell you they don't have a room or your rooms were given uh, your reservations and all these other crazy things. But, you know, um, uh, all, my, all lives matter, but right now we're talking about Black Lives Matter because that seems to be the focus, you know, because uh, uh, things need to change. Uh, uh, everyone that's Black, we have to look at everyone uh, when you went, if you're police, you can't look at Black people, every one of them is a criminal or this or that. I understand the precautions you need to take but you sometimes you have to understand some of us are just good people. You know, we're just like you or your, well, your friends or or people, you know, you know, we're not criminal crime. If we're going to reach uh, to get our ID out of our pocket or whatever, you know, don't pull out your gun so quick. You know, I, I think that we just been dealt a bad hand and uh, usually, uh, I used to look at the news, and, and when I heard of crimes on the news, then I wonder, wonder if he was black or white. But usually you can tell, because if they show the picture, then you know he was a brother. And if they don't show a picture, he was most likely the other race, you know. But I think America, uh, a lot of people aren't prejudiced, you know. They're yeah. not prejudiced. A lot of we have a lot of loving and beautiful Caucasian white people in America, you know, but we do have the ones that are prejudiced. But just because a person is a Republican doesn't make them prejudiced or a bad person. Right. You know, uh, uh, I think the biggest thing we need to do is just learn how to live or be in the same room together without judging or faulting one another 
and and and, and be fair about things and, and the opportunities, you know, the equal opportunity that says equal, not not just uh unbalanced but equal. And and uh I think uh we come a long way. We have a long way to go. Do you believe but, that as I do that when I was growing up, because we were growing we were raised to treat all people the way we would like to be treated. I remember uh-huh. my, my grandmother used to tell me all the time that if I went to jail for out there committing a crime and I went to jail, she wasn't going to come see me. She wasn't going to put money on a book, no collect phone calls that she was gonna, I had to do the time. And because of that, I, uh, I've never gone to jail. I've never committed a crime. None of my folks have either, you know, my brothers and sisters. But, and so when we, if and when we were stopped by a cop, we knew to just follow the instructions and the cops would ask us questions, do what they need to do, that, and then they'll let you go. But today, blacks that are being hurt by cops or harassed are not following the instructional, the instructions of the officer. And they have crimes and they're on the run, they're in jail. Do you think that if the blacks were to just follow the instructions, and let the cop do their job, then we wouldn't have, I mean, the blacks wouldn't be affected in the way that they think they're being affected by cops. Yeah, yeah, I believe that, you know. But uh, I, I, I've never had an issue, so I really can't comment on it. Right. Uh, uh, but uh, we do need police. You yes. Know? And, and there's a lot of great cops out there. You know, all cops ain't bad cops, you know, because I know some great cops. Me too, of all and colors, then, too. Exactly, that's what I was just going to say. And they're not just black cops, you know. So uh, when it comes to police and the whole thing, you know, I'm for peace and love. Yeah. If yeah. we have a problem here, we have a problem here. It's that simple. Well, why do you think that the blacks today, when these people are running into it with the cops, Rather than saying, you know what, don't let your child, this is an example of what your child should not do. Your child shouldn't be a criminal. They shouldn't be running from the cop. They shouldn't be cussing the cop out or reaching for a knife or a gun or anything. Instead, home, bro. instead of doing that, they blame the cop, calling it white some, uh, some premises. Man, start, I'm going to say this starts at home, man. Yeah. All of that behavior goes way back. It's just not when the cop stops. It goes back to when you was a young man, how you treated other people. That's how, right. How you were raised and all that. It goes back to all of that. Because, I, like I said, I've never had a problem, you know. They've never asked me for anything but my ID. Same and here. My, a re- registration and my insurance papers, you know. And I usually have all of that, you know, in, in line. And I and and, and I, I drive some nice cars. So yeah. you they will really harass me and, 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 and is this or what if this your car da, 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 let me check no they look at my work paperwork and do whatever they're gonna do give me a ticket or whatever or tell me have a nice day and i'm i'm on it free that's, that's right that's you know but i i've had a few friends what you stopped me for <laughs> da, 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 da. i know First, you're gonna get treated the way you treat others yes Absolutely. If you just say hello, officer, uh, 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 did, did I do something wrong? That's better than say, what you stopped me for. Yes. Is the attitude. You you come with an attitude, you're gonna get one back. So why don't we hear more of that type of correction from the blacks in America today? Because they used to do it that way, rather than blaming the cop and not saying anything about the bad behavior of the blacks. Because who are first of all, we're we're where I don't know if you feel this way, but I think most black men especially feel this way. We notice when it's a cop in the area, whether you're driving or walking, they go a cop. You know, you <laughs> say it to yourself or something. Yeah. You know? So I think we're always on the defense about it. So that's one of the problems. We're always on the defense about policemen. You know, policemen stop you, what you stop me for. Yeah. I used to be that way when I didn't have my insurance. I didn't renew my insurance on my car or something. Uh huh. I used to be looking for the cops so I could hide. But once I got my life together and driver's license updated, my car insurance, 
I, I, I would be afraid of the cops then. No, there's nothing they can do. You living by the law of the land. Yes. And that's that's what we need to do. That's you right. Know? If you're driving and your license expired, you're driving with an expired license. You're supposed <laughs> to go to jail. I know. That's why you I was know? afraid of the cop. Not because why I thought your they license were... expired. Were you drinking and driving, or did you do something crooked? Were you? That's you right. know, there's a reason for everything. And 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 um, I hate to say we need to follow the rules. We need to follow the law. That's right. One hundred percent. They're not rules. They're they're the law. The law of the land. Yes, exactly. Amazing. You know? I'm glad to hear you say that. One other thing about that. I never thought one day that I would see black, especially black men and women of God, following an organization like Black Lives Matter. The organization is, was founded, and I've interviewed them, was founded by a bunch of, bunch of fat, black, radical lesbians who hate God, who hate the nuclear family, the unborn children, and they admitted that they were trained Marxists. I never thought I would see the day where blacks would go along with that. Well, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> you know, I, don't, I don't know anything. But like I said, black lives do matter. And and and, and right now we're, we're focused on black lives, you know, all lives matter. But yeah. right now, focus on black lives and what that statement is saying right now you're hurting us it matters you know or don't be so quick to pull out the gun or beat the shit out of a black person you know because <laughs> uh, we're people too you know and that's that's what that statement is saying did you vote in this last election that yes was, and who did you vote for i'm not gonna say i you knew know. you weren't gonna say well, I'm a type of person. I think my political feelings should be mine. I voted but, for the great white hope. <laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> Can you see this? I think that's Biden, isn't it? No, Lord, no. That's Donald Trump, the great white oh, hope. Okay. okay. I voted for him. What do you think about that? Well, that's your preference. Are you a conservative or a Democrat? Well, I'm for whatever is right for the people. Oh, well, that means you voted for Trump. Huh? Whatever is right for the people. You voted for Trump. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> you, we're brothers. I voted, okay? I got you, man. We, if you voted for what was right, that means you voted for the great white hope, Donald Trump. What do you think about the way the election went with all the uh, uh, miscounting and, and fraudulent ballot counting and all that? Man, that's politics. I don't give into politics. That's <laughs> something I can't control. My voice uh, only matters at the voting poll. There you, you know? go. That's right. No, I don't blame that. you because you're an entertainer, and I like it when entertainers just entertain. And they're private <laughs> voting stuff. I don't necessarily want to know about it. I just want you to entertain yeah. me. Man, I, I, I punch both of their names on the ticket. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote my name in for one of the things, uh, not for president, but for something else. I, did, I didn't agree with any of them, so I, I wrote my name in there. Yeah, okay. So I got to ask you this. What is a man? Is that your question? Yes. What is a man? Yes. A man is a person that's uh, considerate of others, number one, I should say. Believe in God, believe in the, the love of family, and, and therefore the children and the family. And... and have respect for have respect for others, and that, and what is love? Love is all those things, all those things collaborated. Uh, you can have love for anything, but true love is the love that you have for the Lord, and through that love, you can love almost anything that's lovable. Yeah, I um I want to ask you about racism. Then I got to put you on the hot seat before we run out of time here. Um, 
I believe that our battle is a spiritual battle, that there's no such thing as racism, sexism, homophobism, Islamophobism, Debbie Dadism, white supremacism, anti-Semitism. I believe it's love or hate. You either love or you hate. And if you can overcome the hate, you have perfect love. And then our battle is a spiritual battle between right and wrong, good or evil. And you can find evil in any race of people, or you can find, and you can find good in any race of people. Am I wrong about that? You're right about that. You're right about that. Yeah. That's what we need to start dealing with instead of calling it something other than what it is. Mm -hmm. I've seen people flip flop. You know, one day, one day or one moment they hate something, the next moment they love it. Yeah. You know, that's happened to me. I've gone to the DMV, you know, I'm, you know, I'm wearing my shades, of course, because, uh, you know, Jackson, I'm, I'm thinking it's hiding me. Yeah. So when I go to the counter and the, the lady behind the desk is sitting down in the chair looking up at me. She's asking me questions and shit. And take off your glasses. Do you know how annoying it is talking to someone and you can see yourself? I had on mirror glasses. <laughs> so I took off my glasses. So uh, the late, the people in the back, when I told them, they start coming over and asking for my autographs. So she's talking to me, the lady's talking to me, and I'm signing autographs and handing them back to her her co co-workers and she's looking around trying to figure out what the hell's going on. <laughs> and, 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 and she said, who is he? The lady told her Then she got so excited. Then she uh, actually uh, asked me for my autograph for her granddaughter. <laughs> <laughs> then I said to her, I said, can I put my classes back on now? <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, so that's one of that's my sample of uh, somebody negative and positive. Yeah, at, uh, that's a good example because we're supposed to treat all people. She flip flopped and was the nicest person to me after that. Yeah, that's if we treated all people the same, no matter what, in the way we were like, exactly. then we won't have to flip flop like that. Exactly, exactly, and that 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 moment comes up a few times in my life because I'll never forget it. Do you have real friends who just like you for you and not because of who you are or what you do? Very, 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 very few. You know, my, my best friend in the whole wide world passed away a couple of years back. A guy by the name of Eddie Tate. And this guy was just so cool, man. You know, I could trust him with my life. Yeah. I never, I now, and when he passed, I, I just knew from that moment, I'll never find another friend like that. So, yeah. are you lonely because of that? No, no, I'm not lonely at all. You know, I have a happy family. Yeah, I have a big family, a lot of brothers and children. And they keep me well occupied. Put it this way, I miss him dearly. But uh, I'm not lonely. Yeah, I, I have too much to do to be lonely. Nice. Um, one last thing about that. I'm sorry about your loss, by the way. But what was it like when you lost Michael Jackson? What was that like for you personally? Oh, oh that was one of the worst times ever. You know, because. Uh, I was basically at home and I was working and I was building, actually building a recording studio in my house. And my uh, middle son called me and said, Dad, is it true what they're saying on the news about Monica Michael? I said, what they saying? They said, well, he just was rushed to the hospital on cardiac arrest. I said, I haven't heard that. So I turned on CNN and of course I saw the news and I got a call from my uh, mother asking, us to come down to the hospital. So uh, I was, it was rush hour too. So I said, Mother, I'll try to get there within the next hour. So, you know, LA traffic. Yeah. So meanwhile, I'm in my construction clothes. So I'm, I changed my clothes, put on some at least halfway decent. Stop by the gas station, fill up my car because I got maybe 30, 40 miles to drive. And uh, 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 Janet calls me. 
And she said, Tito, are you driving? And right then I knew. I just broke down right there, you know. Uh, I knew right then. And uh, it was just hard, man. I can imagine. Hard. You never imagined that you will lose a brother so young. Yeah. And so, so talented and so loving, so gifted, all the great things that he was. And, and what really pissed me off is all the mix, misconceptions that people in the self form opinions and the haters and, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's just unfair. Yeah. It's unfair. And uh, it's not right, man. I totally understand. Uh, and I, I mean, the world is evil out there, and, and jealousy and It envy. is an evil, it's a loving but evil place. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Are you over that loss now, and does it still get to you at time? So you never get over that, man. You know, it's hard to get over that, you yeah. know. I think about my brother every day, man. Every day. You know, how how good of a person he was, you yeah. know. And it wasn't just for family, it's for the world, for everybody. And nobody saw it. Most people didn't want to believe it. You know, they'll never get another Michael Jackson. We don't get people like that every day. That's right. You know, yeah. it just doesn't happen. You know, and this one happened to be super talented. Yeah. Well, people tend to just believe what they hear without knowing the facts of it. And then they go people out like and read they, they they go out people, re people like to gossip and talk. Yeah. Yeah. Talkers, man, and ask them what have you done? What have you contribute? Absolutely nothing. That's right, man. That's why one good thing about that when you see a person like that, you know that's your enemy and you let them go. Because if you keep them around in your life, they'll destroy you. Yeah, they destroy you and everything around you and them. That's right. I got to put you on the hot seat now. And so okay. <laughs> what I need is um, I got to heat up this interview. So I need you to answer these questions as quickly as possible. Okay. The hot seat. Do you do real men make boys first? I don't know. Are the Kardashians a good influence on America? Sometimes. Should sex be saved for marriage? Yes. Using just one word, describe Joe Biden. A person. Is it racist for white people to celebrate their heritage? Celebrate the heritage? Yes. Is it great? Is it racist for white people to celebrate their heritage? Depends on what, what you call a heritage. Do you believe in Jesus? Yes. Is there only one truth, or does each person have their own truth? Truth or truth? Truth. T-R-U-T-H. It's one truth. Is the, money, is the love of money the root of all evil? Yes. Do black people in America today have privilege? Very little. <laughs> Is it normal to have anger? Yes. Amazing. I always, I know for a fact, you know, one day you and I have to have lunch and I explain it to you, uh, on me, that any male that has anger is a woman. Mm -hmm. Any male that has anger? Uh-huh, is a woman. I don't understand that. <laughs> It's normal. It's abnormal for men to have anger. Men are supposed to be logical so they can help their woman overcome her anger. But when you're raised by your mother and if she imposes a will on you or turn you away from your father, you become angry. You take on her identity. And that's why we must be born again of the spirit of God. And so that's why men with anger act just like women. I hear you. <laughs> Tito, thank you for taking the hot seat. Is there anything you want to put? Oh, I got to ask. Did you have fun? I certainly did. Is there anything you want to promote? or let? Because you're on the road right now, right? Not really. I'm in Las Vegas. Oh, okay. Anything you want to promote? Website, tour, or anything going on? Well, check out my album. 
is entitled Tito Time. And on all your media outlets, Spotify, uh, iTunes, Google Play, or whatever. Well, I really, really appreciate you being here. Um, and uh, when you come back to L.A., we're right at the corner of Los Angeles and Pico. You're going to have to come by. We're going to have some coffee. Oh, you got it, my brother. I used to be, I used to hang out in La Cienica in Washington. That's yeah. where my, where my wife from that area. Amazing. Well, you know uh -huh. where we're located is. So next time, come on by, we can hang out. You got it, baby. Thank you, man. I wish you well, and God bless you, man. I appreciate you. God bless you, too. All right. Take care. Thank you. I will. All right. All right. Thank you, folks, for tuning in. I absolutely appreciate it. Don't forget to like, follow, tweet, subscribe, share, ring the bell, and check out our merch uh, at the, on the store there. Uh, we really do appreciate it. Thank you for your su financial support as well. You help us keep this going. And... Let me hear from you. Amazing. Have a good one, folks. Next time on The Fallen State. Liberation theology is simply interpreting the Bible from the perspective of the poor and the oppressed. Like basic <laughs> theology. Jesus was not poor and oppressed. Jesus was not poor? And not oppressed either. We have to allow uh, corporations and the government to take care of us right now. Capitalism wasn't always here. There was feudalism before capitalism. Now. I feel like we can finally transition to socialism. You said the black and brown people didn't go far enough with their riots. Jesus uh, well, also where you? rioted. You believe in abortions as well? I believe that women should have the choice. Is that fine with God? I can't say. But aren't you a preacher? Yeah. <laughs>watching the fallen state we need your continued support donate to my nonprofit here subscribe and like the videos here and tell everybody and their mama about the show